Hello, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a wine educational channel that helps you with all of your needs to gain your confidence to pass things like the WSET courses and others. So this is a section on wine production, that's unit one or D1 for the WSET level four diploma. And we're looking here at maturation, the role of wood. So this is going to be part one of two. This is available as free content, as you'll know, on YouTube. And if you are on YouTube, please, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, you can get in touch via the comments section below this video. Um, also, you can get in touch via the social media that you see at the bottom of every slide or direct at my website, winewithjimmy.com. That's info at winewithjimmy.com. Uh, part two of this series is only available on my portal. That's the e-learning portal, which gives you a huge wealth of educational needs, such as things like extra um, exclusive videos of which there's a lot more and things like written questions for the diploma as well. So without further ado, we're going to start looking at the world of wood in maturation of wine. And this part is talking about the age, the type and the size of the wooden barrels. So wooden vessels permit slow exposure to oxygen during the wine's maturation. This has actually been covered in a previous video looking at the role of oxygen in maturation before this series. So please take a look at that if you haven't done so already. However, a newly made wooden vessel also contains various extractable compounds, including phenols, so things like tannins, and many aroma and flavor compounds, which can have significant influence on the wine style. No doubt some of you have tried wines that have very pronounced oak characteristics, which sometimes can knock the wine out of balance, or maybe a young wine that just hasn't grown into its oak profile yet. Uh, so the level and type of compounds extracted from wood vessels depend on the following features that we'll go through for the wooden vessel. So the age, the type and the size of wood. So we'll go through all of those areas. First of all, I just want you to know a terminology here from French, which is élevage. So élevage means uh, it's quite quite romantic in a way, actually. It means an upbringing. So it's an upbringing of a barrel in a cellar. So it's kind of guiding it to maturity, I suppose, the wine. So it's the upbringing or breeding of wine in casks. So you may hear people talk about the élevage of wine. Um, so a little bit here on the uh, the age of the vessel to start with. And I've got a few slides to look at this. Um, so first of all, talking about, of course, brand new oak barrels. So new wood will contain various extractable compounds. Um, where new oak is used, it is normally typically a proportion of the blend. Um, and then the other proportion will be pre-used barrels. So often you might see 10, 25, 50% or something of new wood, depending of course on the philosophy of the winemaking team and of course the style they are hoping to achieve. So new wood, uh, and of course it can be 100%, no doubt, but um, they do tend to be typically a blend of the, uh, a certain amount. So we'll go through characteristics that you'll find in that as well. And then pre-used barrels. So the flavours of new oak, which uh, if you do mature wine in new oak barrels, they can actually gain exceedingly intensive compounds. They may be too dominant or they may clash with the flavours of certain wines, particularly, of course, things like aromatic grape varieties. Uh, so therefore, if you are utilising barrels, winemakers will opt to use 
older barrels, pre-used barrels, or what we sometimes call neutral barrels. So have a look at the region of Alsace in eastern, northeastern France. A lot of aromatic grape varieties here, including Riesling, Gewürztraminer, and others like Pinot Blanc, Muscat as well. Now, actually, it's actually quite traditional to mature these wines in barrel from the Vosges Mountains. There's a wonderful forest where you can source oak, of course, very close by um, in the same region. So therefore, that's commonly used, but the barrels tend to be older. So they don't impart those characteristics and don't uh, affect the aromatic capability of those varieties too intensively. And I do believe, actually, I think the oldest barrel in use, as per the Guinness um, Book of World Records, I think it's in, uh, I think it's in Alsace. So each time a barrel is used, the amount of extraction that will occur from that barrel to the wine will decrease because fewer extractable compounds will remain. The barrel loses about 50% of its new oak flavors uh, during the first use of oak. And I, call, I kind of say this is like half life. So after the first fill, you, use, you, you lose around half. Second fill, you lose half of that again third fill, uh, half of that again. And really by the fourth time of use, it will contribute very little of those extractable compounds, um, but it will still allow the ingress of oxygen. Okay, so remember barrels are, are used as a vessel to contain the wine. Yes, they can impart flavor, but they also do allow a small amount of oxygen transfer, um, either through the very, very um, thin gaps that we'll find between the staves or normally through the bunghole uh, when that is being opened up for topping up or things like racking or lees stirring. So, uh, so yes, that is um, uh, certainly when you get to this age, it becomes a more of a neutral barrel after three or four uses. Uh, so, of course, if you are utilising barrels that have been around 5, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, maybe they need to be reconditioned, but they can be reused, but really merely as a vessel and for a vessel to allow oxidation. OK, so that's the nature of pre-used barrels. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the size of the barrel. So small vessels such as barriques, the one in the middle of this picture, at 225 litres, hold a relatively small volume of liquid compared to the surface area of the vessel. This means that any extraction from the wood and exposure to oxygen is greater in small vessels, of course, in comparison to large vessels. And the large vessels being things like tonneau and foutre, or in Italian, botti, uh, which are these large uh, large vats, which could be anywhere from a thousand to sometimes even up to like 20,000 litres. Uh, typically, um, late bottle vintage ports matured in big 20,000 litre vats in the Douro Valley, well, uh, made in the Douro Valley and then um, matured down in um, places on the coast like Villanova de Gaia. Large barrels really keeping the wine quite, quite a fresh state because there is little oxygen transfer or, and the oak barrels tend to be quite mature at the same time. OK, so size of vessel. So what about flavours that we can actually extract from the wood and find in the wine? Well, we have quite a big list. Um, so you'll see here you've got uh, furfural, you have guayacol, oak lactones, eugenol, and you've got vanillin as well. So let's talk through those. First of all, furfural, which is a wonderful <laughs> name to say. Uh, this is produced by um, heat-induced degradation of sugars and carbohydrates. So of course, if you've got that degradation of sugars, you'll see that's where we get things like dried fruit or butterscotch, um, burnt sugar characteristics or burnt almond as well as possible with that. Uh, guaycol is formed by the degradation of the wood component lignin and lignin uh, and that's during toasting 
Uh, this is therefore increased during very high toasting levels. We'll talk about toasting, what that is in a second. So if you're thinking about really toasting the wood, then of course you're going to get these kind of charred or burn overtone characteristics through this. Um, oak lactone is very important, certainly in American oak. This is increased by seasoning uh, and reduced by toasting. American oak, as I mentioned, has very high percentages of this. And uh, in some studies, we have found that in comparison to some types of French oak, there's around 10 times the amount of oak lactones in American oak than some types of, um, of French oak. And other types of French oak, about three or four times the amount. And the characteristics you'll get with lactone are very coconutty characters. Uh, eugenol is increased by seasoning and is also uh, reported to increase by toasting as well, giving those quite clovey notes or spice, of course. And then vanilla, which is increased by light toasting, not over toasting, but light toasting. That kind of gives you that creaminess, that creamy vanilla characteristic. OK, so a lot of this is linked to the origin of the oak, but also then how it is treated, seasoned and then how it is made uh, with things like toasting elements as well. So the type of wood, first of all. So the most common type of wood used for winery vessels is oak. Uh, now there are others and I'll talk about that later, but it can easily be shaped into a barrel. I say easily, it's still a wonderful skill and an art to uh, create an oak barrel, a cooper in a cooper ridge. Uh, but it is um, malleable, it is possible, and it can be done. And it makes containers that are watertight, not airtight, pretty airtight, uh, but it will allow some oxygen, but um, watertight. So, of course, it holds the wine inside the vessel. And, of course, oak is also prized for what it gives to the wine. So it's extractable components. It's maybe it's it's phenolic capabilities, it's structure, but also, of course, the aromas and the flavors that I just went through on the previous slide. So let's talk a little bit about oak again then and the location of the oak. So what forests in the world we find it coming from. So different species of oak, of course, will have different characteristics. And this is where it gets even more mind blowing with the world of wine. Of course, you'll know we've got thousands of different types of grape varieties, then different types of biotypes, and then different types of clones, different types of rootstocks. And it goes on and on. And the variables are just mind blowing. But even when you think about the maturation phase, we've got all of these different um, types of wood, the location of the oak forests, which all give different characteristics. It is possible for the same species of oak to show different characteristics also depending on where it's grown as well. Most winery oak vessels are made from European oak, typically French, but there's also things like Russian, Austrian, Hungarian, Slavonian, so that Croatian oak, uh, or of course American oak as well. Uh, one of the key differences is that American oak has been found to contain much higher levels of lactones that I mentioned on the previous slide. And this gives that typical characteristic of coconut. And in general, American oak tends to impart a greater intensity of aromas and flavors than a European oak, which is said to be more subtle in its, uh, in its approach. Uh, European oak, though, can impart tannin. Let's have a look at this table. So you see here three types of species of oak. You've got Quercus roba at the top there, which is found classically in the Lamazan French forests near Burgundy. And that gives the quite a high extractable um, polyphenol content. So more of a tannic note can be extracted, giving more structure, therefore, but less aromatic. So really useful for adding structure to wines. Quercus sessilis is found in more central French oak forests and Vosges. So Alsace is mountain range, adding more aroma, said to give a little bit more lactone, but less structure. And then finally, Quercus alba, the American 
oak species, which doesn't add much phenol content, but is highly aromatic, certainly with the coconut characteristic linked into, of course, with vanilla as well. So I hope that gives you some good um, thought there for the types of oak in the world. Um, a few things around production costs. So the production process for barrels made from European oak is more expensive than for American oak. And the reason behind this is that French oak vessels are more expensive to buy. Why? Well, they it's the production method. And we'll see that there's some production method going on here. Um, it's quite traditional. There's, of course, some modernization in a cooperage, but still the process is pretty long winded at, produ at producing these. So we know that French oak barrels are more expensive. And actually, they do tend to be in the range of around uh, 600 to 1200 euros for French oak barrel, new French oak barrel, whereas an American new barrel is something like 300 to 600 euros. Um, so you're looking at around half the price uh, for an American in comparison to French. And this is because a European oak must be split along the medullary rays. And these are horizontal structures that run radially through the wood. And, and this is to create the staves. American oak, though, can be sawn. Uh, and this is much more inexpensive. And that's due to the presence in American oak of tyloses. And these are structures that block the vertical running fibers at regular intervals. If European oak was sawn, if you tried to sawn European oak, it would just actually make it porous and it would not be useful as a container to hold a liquid. Um, so, of course, more vessels can be made out of American oak due to the fact it can be sawn. Uh, and that means you can make more from the same amount of oak than a European oak. And also American oak is said to grow significantly quicker than European oak. So you've got these two major factors why American oak is more affordable. OK, um, just a little bit on seasoning and toasting. I actually will go into great amount of detail on this on the next part. But I just want to mention a couple of things here, just the terminologies really of these two. So seasoning is before the construction of the barrel. And this is really to bring it up to humidity levels that are in line of where it will be used. And also, though, to allow some important chemical modifications to occur. And seasoning will typically take place outside for about two to three years. And you'll find that certain compounds are reduced and certain aromas are increased. And we'll talk through that on part two. Toasting is where the staves, and you'll see these are individual staves here that make up the barrel. This is where the staves are heated over a brazier, and this is so that it can be bent into shape, the required shape. And it also allows, therefore, when the wine comes in contact in the inside of the barrel, it allows for more effective release of aromas and flavors. And as we mentioned on a previous slide before, when we talked about the typical aromas and flavors, Seasoning and toasting can have effects on the certain types of aromas and flat flavors given off. Um, and then another variable related to the type of wood is the tightness of the grain. A more tightly grained wood is the result of a slower growth of the tree. Uh, so, for example, oak trees that are grown in continental climates, particularly places like Russia, Hungary, Austria, tend to grow slowly and therefore have very tight grains. Wood with a tight grain slows down the extraction of compounds compared with coarser grained wood and can alter what particular compounds can be most extracted. So let's give a few examples here. So one example is Hungarian oak, which tends to have, as we mentioned just before, a tight grain. And this is actually gaining a lot of popularity in New York State as an option, as it allows a very gradual extraction of aroma compounds and tannin for their very delicate red wines. 
uh, many of which are light or medium in alcohol body, tannin and flavor intensity. So that, that really is so they don't dominate the wine style. Okay, so tightness of the grain. And then finally, um, just a little bit of a mention of other types of wood. So not oak, so other types of wood. Uh, and although oak is by far the most common, you'll also have other types like chestnut, for example, acacia and cherry as well. Uh, and these can, can, of course, impart their very distinctive characteristics, acacia being a little bit more aromatic, chestnut being a bit more rounded and and uh, and cherry being a little bit more supposedly fruit driven in its style. OK, so there are your other woods. I do hope you have found this first part useful. Part two, remember, is going to be talking about the production in a cooperage of barrels. So please do join me for that. That's only available on the e-learning portal at Wine with Jimmy. Um, if you do have any comments, questions or concerns, you can get in touch with me here at Wine with Jimmy by commenting below on this video on YouTube. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe to get regular updates on a weekly basis for all your wine educational needs. Otherwise, uh, have a look at the social media if you want to have a look at uh, Instagram and things like Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and you can get in touch via there or direct at winewithjimmy.com. And that's info at winewithjimmy.com. Um, otherwise, if you do find yourself in London, you know, I've got establishments like bars and schools. So come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. See you soon. Goodbye.